Day two of the Defend Our Democracy campaign conference on democratic renewal and change will continue talking about the threats to democracy and what should be the collective role in addressing these and envisioning a new participatory politics. Participants will deliberate on what needs to be done to shift our politics from one that is the sole preserve of the political parties, lacks accountability and is not service driven to one that puts the public interests first. Yesterday we opened the conference where different speakers making their inputs. They then the conference then went into commissions and now we are getting the reports from the commissions. But let me just say very clearly the people of South Africa are fed up about what has been happening in this country. Um, they are determined to make sure that no politician takes them for granted. Nobody undermines our intelligence. We're going to renew the system and change it. And we're going to make sure that there are, there's new politics in our country where the people who are elected represent the people rather than represent themselves and exploit the system and enrich themselves. That's what, because it destroys the country. Look at SAA. It collapsed. You know, they still to a level where you did they kill you and they're going to kill the country and we're not going to allow that. And those who actually are trying to imagine we don't know and try to, to, to manipulate the people are making a big mistake. It's not going to happen. So this conference is going to come out with a declaration that's going to indicate clear um, action points that the people of South Africa together are going to follow to stop this road. By 2024, we want to make sure that we get the leaders who are going to be leaders of the people rather than thieves and cars. Certainly. Um, so one of the questions that has come up is, yeah. you know, whether uh, Save Our Democracy has any political ambitions or any interest in terms of, you know, entering the political uh, arena. Um, is this part of no. any plans? We are talking about a broad front or what people would call a social movement of all the people of South Africa to re resist this, this rot. It doesn't matter what political party goes in power, but that political party must elect people who are respected by the people, who are not going to be corrupt, and who are going to make sure they represent the people and make sure the pain of the poor is dealt with which is really the critical issue. And so ours is to mobilize the country. You'll remember when we started the, the Defend Our Democracy, I said the people are the last line of defense. It's not the parties, it's the people. And that's the people we are mobilizing. Okay. Now, as some criticisms could come in the way of, by way of um, that some of the people who are involved, and some of the officials involved, such as yourself, sir, yeah. uh, did serve under the current um, uh, administration, you know. Yeah. And um, some might ask, you know, when did you start realizing that you know democracy needed to be saved and when did the rot that we have seen um, contribute to the decay um, in terms of state-owned enterprises and so on uh, start and, and what was done you know by those who were within the, 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 the government at the time to try and stop it. But that's now history you know you know the state capture is what started this intensified our level of crisis I mean before 2008 2009 the SAA had challenges, but it was not captured in a way that people really steal billions from it to collapse it. Look at ESCOM now. I mean, we had the darkness yesterday throughout during our conference because people are looting and don't want to allow any change. Now, I just want to say this is history now because, you know, when we realized that these comrades were going to destroy the country. We took a stand in 2015. The masses of the people took to the streets. Uh, the veterans of the African National Congress itself took, to the, to, took a stand and said this must end. And that led to 2017, you know, when Nazareth happened, 
the change was not drastic enough to actually save our country. And it has been a struggle since then up to now. So that struggle is not over. That's why we are here. Because state capture is still continuing in other elements of the state. And we have to stop it.